Hi, I'm Michelle Bigot with a look at what's happening in Latin America now. But first, our news trivia. Which country wants to create the first underwater museum in South America? We'll have the answer later. Brazil will hold presidential elections this upcoming weekend. Far-right President Jair Bolsonaro is going up for re-election against former President Luis Ignacio Lula da Silva, among other lesser-known candidates. Analysts say Bolsonaro has used high-profile international events to campaign, such as his speech in the UN General Assembly and the UK funeral of Queen Elizabeth II. But an election survey by the IPEC Institute had Lula leading with 47 percent of the vote and Bolsonaro with 35. If one of the candidates on October 2nd gets more than 50 percent of the vote, they will automatically be declared the next leader without a second round. And now let's go to my colleague in Mexico, Al Baverstock, where homicides have hit 126,000 in the presidency of Andrés Manuel López Obrador. With over 126,000 homicides recorded over the course of his presidency, the highest number ever, and with two years still to run of his six-year term, the administration of Mexican President Andrés Manuel López Obrador is now being described as the government of the corpses by his critics. Challenged at his morning press conference, AMLO argued that there was more to the figures than met the eye, that his administration has flattened the upward curve of spiralling violence in the country, and that his policies of increased militarization and hugs not bullets have tackled Mexican organised crime. However, if the current rate of 84 Mexicans being murdered on a daily basis continues, AMLO will finish his presidency with more than 190,000 murdered on his watch, 53% more than any president in modern Mexican history. Hurricane Ian made landfall in Cuba Tuesday morning and rapidly intensified from a Category 2 storm to a Category 3. Wind gusts measured up to 125 miles per hour. A cyclone alert was declared in six western provinces where half a million people live. Hundreds of residents from coastal areas were evacuated. Scientists have predicted this to be an above average hurricane season in the Atlantic. Ian's path includes Florida and the Cayman Islands. Colombia and Venezuela reopened their borders for trade after seven years. In an event this week at the border, Colombia's President Gustavo Petro commemorated the re-establishment of commercial relations. How does this affect Colombians and Venezuelans at the border? Since primary goods such as coffee, food, carbon, aluminum, cleaning supplies and other goods could not be sold legally, they were being illegally crossed between the two countries, making products scarce and expensive. Hopefully, say citizens, this will help their standard of living. We will be following developments. And now my colleague Joel Richards in Argentina with a story we will be following in the coming weeks, leading up to the World Cup. The World Cup is just around the corner and the question in Argentina right now is not so much who will join Lionel Messi in the starting 11, but rather whether supporters will be able to fill their sticker albums. For collectors, finding a newsstand that has stickers to sell has become really an odyssey. There's speculation over whether this is down to Panini not producing enough stickers, which the company denies, or if demand has simply spiked. This is the last World Cup for Messi, the national team has gone 35 matches unbeaten, and there's huge, huge excitement about the national team's possibilities in Qatar. But the only thing that is clear right now is that there is a major shortage of stickers. And this is a football crazed country, and so it's now become a question of national importance. Even the government has stepped in to find a solution. Supporters need around 700 stickers to complete the album. Each packet of five should cost around a dollar, but online you can now find rare stickers such as that of Messi on sale for up to $150. And now the answer to our news trivia. The answer is A. 
A group of Venezuelan enthusiasts are trying to create South America's first underwater museum. These waters, located in the Los Frailes archipelago, northeast of Margarita Island, had been affected by the banned practice to fish with giant trawling nets. A marine biologist and aquaculturist from Venezuela have put in 2.3 meter high underwater statues to help deter fishermen and help repopulate coral life below, making it a beautiful tourist attraction. And that's it for this week. We'll see you again soon on Latin America Now.